Hello YouTube, I'm Ephraim225 and I finally decided to start up another Let's Play. This time around I'm going to play a game that I initially thought was kind of eh, but after a few years I've kind of come to appreciate it a lot more than I did back in the day. So let's see what it is. Epic zoom in on the book in this FMV here. Good people of the Imperial City, welcome to the arena! The first Elder Scrolls game released back in 1994. Um, it was really like something special for its time because this was one of the earliest open world RPGs to really do the genre justice. It was heavily inspired by what else? Ultima, particularly Ultima Underworld, which was a dungeon crawler with a first person perspective. Uh, this game has a really interesting history, in fact. It was originally going to be about, well, arenas with gladiators and stuff, with a party you could control, but they eventually decided that a solo role-playing adventure was much more appealing, because they started to enjoy the side quests more than the actual game. And, uh, the people of the known world began to call this Land of Sorrow the arena. Yeah, they had to come up with some excuse to keep the title arena for some reason. I guess they had already worked on the promotional materials is what I'm guessing happened. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and start a new game. And the riveting backstory begins. I actually have a slight mod installed. Um, this screen uh, gave the wrong name for the Emperor. It originally called him Uriel Septim the Fourth, but it's actually the Seventh in canon. So I have the texture modded to change that to what it's supposed to be. And for once, we have a kidnapped emperor instead of a kidnapped princess. But oh wait, a girl got killed. So that's good. We've <gasps> we've done something with a woman as is apparently obligatory for the genre. You know, there's something familiar about this plot line. I can't quite think of it, but there's something familiar. Hmm. Well, whatever. It's time to create our character. Now you can, um, there are two options. You can answer a sort of personality test, and one of the questions involves a stolen sweet roll, which is a running gag with all of Bethesda's games. So, but we're not going to take the personality test because it never gives you a good class. There are 18 classes. All of them, like most of them, are really, really bad. The only good ones, in my opinion, are Knight, if you want to go with physical weapons, and Heavy Metal Armor. Heavy metal armor. <laughs> and healer is also really good because they have some nice armor, they have some night they have okay weapons, but they have a big MP pool, which is which is what you really want. And they get discounts on certain spells. But the class I'm going to choose is the sorcerer. I'll explain what's so different about the sorcerer later. We will name ourselves well, I'm just gonna give myself the obvious name. No, not an N. That's better. Gender is going to be male. This has a slight effect on your stats. And now we choose the race for our character by choosing the province they originated from. Uh, there are... Let's see, there's eight different races. Um, they all have different perks and attribute scores, but the race that I'm going with is the Wood Elves, which come from Valenwood. And the reason I'm going with Wood Elf is because... Oh yeah, this is funny too, listen to this. Know ye this also, thy grace is one with the forest and its creatures, and thy strength flows from the Mother Earth itself. Thou art one with the world. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a little thing like that for every race, and it's amazing. Thy body and mind must be intelligent and agile if thou art to succeed as a sorcerer. Or I could just break the game like I always do with these games. Go ye now in peace, let thy fate be written in the Elder Scrolls. The only mention of the titular scrolls, like, the scrolls themselves do nothing in the lore of the Elder Scrolls until, like, Skyrim. It's amazing. 
Oh, this is a seriously good roll right off the bat. Um, the way the game works is that it takes the base attributes for the uh, race and then randomly adds from 1 to 20. And then anything else that's left over you can distribute on your own. So this is really good. I can put 18 points wherever I want. So let's see here. Is that a sound bug? I don't think it's a sound bug. So I'm just going to bring some of the lesser stats up to par here. So I'll explain what the stats do. Strength is, of course, uh, damage, but it's also how much inventory space you can carry. We want this to be fairly high, because we're going to be looting like crazy. Intelligence is how many spell points, or that's MP for RPG people. <laughs> um, for sorcerers, they get triple their intelligence, is how many spell points they have. Healer gets just double, which is pretty good, but... And like all the other classes besides like mage just have less than double their int. It's like, you know, healer is pretty much the best mage because it has good armor and double int in spell points. But we're playing sorcerer. Anyhow, willpower is magic defense. Agility is accuracy and evasion. Speed is movement speed. Duh. Endurance is how many hit points you get how many bonus hit points actually you get when you level up and it affects how fast you heal when you rest and personality is just charisma nobody cares about that personality has always been the most useless stat in the Elder Scrolls since the very beginning so just make some minor adjustments here and I think we're and I think we're set I will save those because this is really really good and then you can pick a face, there's really not a lot to choose from. This is really the only character uh, customization you're going to get, because that's all you need. This is a first person perspective, after all. Do not fear for a design. We are still made. Listen to me, there are no others left to carry on this fight. You have been left in this cell to die. Hagarthar, Imperial Battle, Mage of Tamriel, has taken on the guise of the true Emperor. He does not see you as a threat, being only a minor part of the Imperial Court. In that act of arrogance, he had made his first mistake. Look to the north wall of itself. You will find the ruby key which will unlock the door. Take it and make your escape. The passages here were once used by Tharn to hide treasures he had stolen from the Emperor's coffin. If you wish, you can gather enough to support yourself away from the Imperial Fleet. Be careful. There are many creatures which inhabit the sewers now. Vile rats and goblins. It is too late for me, for I am already dead. Only my powers as a sorceress keep me between this life and the next. That power, however, is waning. Do not succumb to greed or you may find these tunnels to be your final resting place as well. I can still work my magic to a certain extent. If you travel west from this cell, then south, you will find a shift gate. It will transport you far enough from the center of the Empire that you should be safe. If you survive these sewers, you will see me again. Remember, Tharn has taken on the guise of the Emperor. No one will gainsay his word for yours. I will come to you again in your dreams. So, it is imperative that you rest from time to time. In that way, I will be able to communicate with you and lend my aid. You are entering a dangerous arena, my friend. One in which the players are beings beyond your mortal comprehension. I do not envy your role. There is, however, a power within you as yet untapped. Look for me when you have gained experience in the world. You are my last and best hope. Jeez, that lady talks a lot. I haven't watched that cutscene in forever. Oh, of course, whoever that uh, actress actually was, I want to shake her hand. Because <laughs> she basically kickstarted an amazing RPG franchise. Anyhow, there's going to be a bunch of walls of text, but as she said, there's a key here for our door. 
Anyhow, to kind of show off what the dungeon crawling in this game is like, I'm going to get all of the treasure piles in this dungeon. There's not really a whole lot of them. Equip that. Now the gimmick for this sorcerer class is that you notice that I have 0 out of 180 MP. The, the gimmick is that they never recover their mana when they rest. Instead, they have to absorb spells cast at them by enemies, which is... It, it kind of makes this opening dungeon difficult because there isn't a single caster enemy in the entire area. Oh, this is a good start already. Treasure piles in this game are randomized and we just got a magic item, which is this ring. Oh, and sorcerers can't equip plate armor, so all of the good stuff is completely unavailable to them. <laughs> now we can cast the spell that's in the ring, but we have no idea what it actually does. It's, uh... Should be safe to try it at least, though. I don't know if that did anything. Let's see if it did. Okay, so it's not an enchantment of any kind. Oh well. <laughs> We'll figure it out. Anyhow, um, I have the control scheme modded so you move around with WASD instead of the arrow keys. Moving around with the arrow keys is awful and you should not do it unless you're like left-handed. To fight in this game, you have to... Oh, hi goblin. Bye goblin. To fight in this game, you have to hold right click and then move uh, the mouse across the screen, which is kind of annoying to deal with, but you get used to it after a while. I... Ooh. Careful. Enemies can sneak up on you. This is, uh, really annoying. But this opening dungeon only has rats and goblins, which is not difficult to deal with. There should be a rat around here. I'm looking at a map on my other monitor. That message, uh, I think is intended to warn beginners of incoming monsters. Anyhow, there should be a secret wall here. There it is. Gotta be careful. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, what am I getting hit by? Oh, there it is. See, it can be difficult to see when you're getting hit. It's annoying. Anyhow, there's a little, uh... A little bit of water there. And there should be... Okay, so that was apparently all the enemies. That's fine. We got a crystal, which again, since it's a, you have to get magic items identified, which is kind of sort of annoying. It's apparently some kind of projectile. Ooh. Oh, those are my spells. You start with a couple spells. What does the ring do? Oh, I get it. The ring restores your stamina. Kind of okay. I mean, if you run out of stamina in a dungeon, you'd, you'd basically die. So that's fine. I want to get my health back, so I'm going to rest. If you rest on the floor, then that invites enemies to attack you at random, and we don't want that. But these little uh, cloves here are perfectly safe. So that's good. Uh, let's see. I better head back to the start of the dungeon, because... Uh... See, I can run around areas I've been in safely, knowing that all the enemies have... Oh, I've killed all the enemies, at least. Because I know, from this map I have, where all the enemies are. And I have no idea what this thumping noise is, but it makes me very frightened. <laughs> Uh, anyone in here? Oh! There you are. I have no idea what that thumping noise is. It stops the enemies from making their noises, so it's annoying. So that's a mark. It doesn't seem to have an effect on stats. Actually, there are eight kinds of accessories. Four of them are always spells. Some kind of fireball, apparently. And it makes a light as it goes, which is very strange. Okay then, where to now? I know, I'll get the uh, treasure piles at the south end of the dungeon. Oh, rat. 
And it's actually a good thing we got projectiles, because if... I think if we get into a certain spot... Well, you know what, I'll just, uh... I'll just show you by casting up a wall. Oh, there's nothing there? Oh, there's apparently nothing there. There's supposed to be two goblins that pop out of that room there. Are they just not there? I guess they're just not there. That's very strange. That's been... Oh, level up. That's been very consistent in my playthroughs of this dungeon. So every time you level up, you get a certain amount of health based on your class. And a couple bonus points to distribute. The bonus points and the health points are always random. So resetting to get good level ups is something you could do but not something you really want to do. I'll put it in strength for now. Did I level up again? No. Ha! <laughs> I thought I leveled up again, but I actually just clicked my portrait to go to my stats. Oopsie. Let me look at the map. Uh... Oh yeah, I know where I'm going. This could take a while to get all of the treasure piles. Am I getting hit? I am not getting hit, okay. I hear the rat noise. Now then, um... Let's go back up here. And, uh, let's go for a swim. Swimming is dangerous because you're... Oh, there it is. You are very, very vulnerable when you're swimming. I think I'm going to find another way in there. Uh, there's not really another way in there. So that's a bit of an interesting place to put a rat. Maybe this will... Oh, that was not a good idea. <laughs> I guess I'll have to... Just, uh, risk it. This is not good. No, not the map. That was very, very bad. You can see how much it uh, hurt me there. Alright, where are we? Oh, I should have come in from that side of the room. Okay. Well, not everyone can play this game perfectly, right? Uh, oh! Goblin, just as I was looking at the map. This is where I'm going. Yes. Oh dear. I don't like the look of that, because if there's an enemy behind this thing here, there isn't. But there is one guy there. And I think there's another one in here somewhere. And, um... Wait. Are there supposed to be treasure piles in here? No. Actually, the treasure piles are behind this wall! <laughs> lots of secret walls. And lots of treasure. Oh, a much better weapon. That's good. And an amulet. Let's see what we got here. Oh, geez. I remember on a previous uh, attempt at this dungeon, like I was just uh, rehearsing this LP, basically, I got a plate helm that sold for like 30,000 gold at the first store I looked at because it was enchanted with something really, really powerful. But since we can't wear that, the helm because it's plate and sorcerers can't equip plate, we can equip this amulet, though. It reduces the amount of damage you take. This is the damage modifiers for each area you can get hit in. It's random uh, where you get hit. Aha! What could that noise be? There we go, that's where they were. Okay, so now we get to try out some spells. No, not that spell, the magic item. Kablooey. 
It's good that the uh, spell lights up the area too, so I get to watch them get hit. That's beautiful. What? Did I just jump across there? You can't do that. You don't. Oh. No time to worry about what just happened there, huh? <laughs> okay, keep moving, keep moving. Oh. We need to head this way. Uh, right up north should be a couple more treasures. Do I got another? Oh yeah, okay, that was a treasure pile, good. More items we get, even if we can't necessarily use them, we can always sell them. Oh! Oh, we got a magic longsword. I gotta see what this does. Does it do anything? It boosts your speed. This looks... Okay. Weird thing, on my rehearsal game, I also got a longsword that improves your speed. You can see it's up to 76 now, but does that mean that the plate helm is also the 30,000 gold one that I got? Oh my goodness, if it turns out to be. I mean, this just looks so familiar. I want to see what the other mark does. But I couldn't have possibly found a way to rig the treasures that you get. That'd be just nuts. Oh, you have to pick a target? Okay, we don't know what the mark does. Anyhow, the Dai Katana that I just picked up is the best weapon type for anybody that can't use a shield. And sorcerers, what do you know, can't use shields. Uh, I need to check which direction I'm going. Yeah, this is the right way. Anyhow, if I wind up starting this game with like 30,000 gold, that would just be utterly ridiculous. I just have to not die. It, you, you can get killed in the opening dungeon of Arena, which is probably not, you know, this opening dungeon being harder than the average gamer can handle is not necessarily a good thing. Mm. But as long as some people can get out of it, I guess it's okay. I know that Daggerfall has a worse opening dungeon in, than this, and um, Morrowind just has no opening dungeon at all. Which was pretty cool. There's gonna be enemies there. Time for more. Not that. Let's try the crystal. Hmm. Guess I better use the other mark. I'm not sure if these uh, crystals and marks have any sort of durability to them. They don't take your SP or any, or they don't take your MP or anything. Hey, level three. Uh, let's go with. No, I don't get plus one damage off of that, so let's put it in... I guess we'll put it in speed. I like having speed. There's the treasure, another mark. What else are we looking at? Oh, there's another hidden door. These, those hidden doors actually do kind of show up on your map, so anybody who thinks I'm cheating by looking at a, at a guide while I'm playing this, just, you know, it shows up on the map, it's right around here. I mean, bombable walls show up in the Zelda games, don't they? At least that one was marked by the little lion head. Oh look, another rat. See ya! <laughs> That is enjoyable. I, I don't often use ranged weaponry in this game. Oh, speaking of ranged weaponry, I just picked up a bow. Oh, kill you. We could use the bow, and it does have infinite ammo, but I find archery to just be a pain. I don't really know why, it just kind of is. If you're not playing a caster, then I guess you could use them. 
for some kind of range, but you also have magic items. Presumably you have magic items. It's not hard to pick up quite a few by the time you're done. The last treasure pile is right there. A torque. A torque is some kind of jewelry. I don't know. I don't really know what it is. Let's see if it's a magic... Uh, well, it's definitely a magic item because accessories are always magic. Okay, good. More uh, damage resistance. I'm getting the weakest form of it, though, which is not really good. Also, I don't check the corpses of monsters for anything because the rats never have anything in the, and the uh, goblins just have a teensy bit of gold. All right, so that's the exit. Now, in the floppy disk version of Arena, you would have to uh, answer some questions to get past a uh, copy protection kind of thing to go in that gate. But this is the CD version, which has the voice acting, the better music and everything, so we do not have to do that. We just go through. And boom, we pop up in a town. Oh, what's this? On a holiday, no less. Uh, this is a Mages Guild... Blah, blah, blah. All magical items are half price today. What do you know? There are holidays in this game. It has a calendar and everything. Unfortunately, it's dark outside, which, oh, which, as you just saw, means that there are monsters in town. So, uh, this is normally where I would, uh, just rest until morning, but it looks like that's going to be a few ways off, so we're going to travel. Now, this is the only Elder Scrolls game where you can travel to any province in Tamriel that you want. But we are going to go to Hammerfell because that's where our next uh, destination is going to be. The game uh, kind of wants you to... Yeah, you can travel from anywhere as long as there's not an enemy nearby. So, we didn't really get to capitalize on that holiday, but I don't mind it. Good, daylight. Much better. So you can talk to people and ask for directions to... Oh, hello there! <laughs> do you see this? Oh, do you see that? <laughs> Pixelated glory right there. I'm so perverted. So I'm just going to try and find a store to sell off some of my stuff, because I want to know how much money we're starting the game with. I'll ask you. Where is the nearest store? South? Okay, let's go south. Now, navigating towns can be kind of a pain. I I have lots of experience with this game, so I know what all of the building textures are for the different provinces. And this is a store, so in we go.